Por favor, un aplauso para darle la bienvenida a Alan Moore. Thank you, thank you. Buenos dias. Uh, to all the Blackberry team, I'd like to thank you so much for giving me the privilege to come and uh, speak to such an amazing uh, audience today. Um, and what I want to do is I want to share with you some um, insights, key trends, stories, case histories, things which um, I've seen on my travels, which I think demonstrate how mobile communications is going to transform the way that we think about enterprise. So the first thing I want to do is to uh, give a big warm welcome to you to the Network Society. Um, as the quote says up here, um, the Network Society is changing um, and restructuring organizations. Um, it's actually kind of culturally a bit of a thing to get your head around. And I just want to give you a true life story about um, what that really looks like from sort of ground level. I've got a friend of mine. He's a little bit older than me, and a couple of years ago, he decided he was going to take his children, um, he lived in America, through Europe. They were going to go on a two-week vacation, traveling through Europe, um, not by car or by airplane, but on a train. And his children said to him, do you know what, Dad? This is a fantastic opportunity for you to read the Harry Potter books, because we really enjoy them. So my friend, thinking that he would be a man of the 21st century, um, he would buy himself uh, an iPod. He would upload these uh, Harry Potter stories as audio files onto his iPod. And as he traveled through Europe, he would uh, listen to the stories, um, which he dutifully did. So as the 1616 from Turin left uh, on that Thursday morning, um, he dutifully put in his uh, headphones, turned on his player, and he started to listen to Harry Potter, which he did for the entire week. And then one morning, coming down for breakfast, he, uh, he comes downstairs and his kids are sitting there. His kids say good morning to him. And then he says, do you know what, kids? Harry Potter's a bit rubbish, isn't it? In fact, it's a bit overrated. And um, his kids looked at him and they said, Dad, come on, you're joking, aren't you? And he said, no, I'm not joking. He said, the characters come all over the place, the plot's all over the place. I don't know what's going on. And they said, come on, Dad, let's have a look at your iPod. So he got his iPod and they started to look at it and they looked at each other and they started to laugh. And my friend's going, so what's so funny? What's going on? And in fact, the tears are rolling down his kid's face. And they say, Dad, you've been listening to Harry Potter for the last week on Shuffle. The thing is, is that my friend doesn't really understand that the network world enables us to see the world in a different type of way. And there are some very important things that we need to understand. Um, what is relevant uh, to this network world. Well, the first thing is, is that we want to live as people in a read-write culture. And network communications, the mobile world, the internet has enabled us to do that. Many people actually, from a mass media and industrial world, only ever wanted us to read, not to write. But the fact is, is that YouTube is uploading 20 hours of audiovisual content of every minute of every day. Because actually the way that we create meaning, the way that we create context, is for us to be able to tell stories. It's little things like you never guess what happened to me when I came, you know, when, on my way home today. So it's really important to understand that we demand actually, on a global basis, this ability now to read and write. And in Northern Europe, in medieval times, we used to have about 115 festivals a year. Even though we were tied to the land, we lived a feudal existence, we were highly participatory. And what we see in this world um, that is evolving around this is, is this idea for us want to be for us to be participatory once again. And if I said in this room who uses a search engine, how many people would put their hand up? Who uses a search engine in this room? There's a few of you, right? Okay. So the question then is, is what are we searching for? And we're searching for information that can enable me to make and take transactions and decisions right now, five minutes time, 10 minutes time, 15 minutes time, the end of the day, whatever it is. And so what we're looking for is the quality of information to enable us to do that. That means therefore that we live in a pull economy, not in a push economy. So already now we're in a read, write, participatory pull economy that is described as a network society. Something very different 
to the world that we, or I grew up in, thinking about a sort of a mass media uh, push world. And this image, as you can see, is a very networked uh, piece of Im imagery. And what it's trying to say is, is that in a network society, we have to think about economics in a different type of way. It's networked. Once upon a time, industries could kind of coexist in very happy silos and not have to look outside of their industries to think about what was going on or what might affect them. The reality is that is no longer the case. And mobile communications is at the very epicenter of this transformation. Jay Rosen, who's a New York journalism professor, once said that, you know, for many years we were atomized as people but connected up to big media, which meant that they had a form of control in terms of how they could set the types of conversation and the debates that we would be having. But the reality is that power has eroded because we are now connected up to and across each other. This presents to all of you in this room a huge challenge, but also, I think, an extraordinary opportunity to grasp what we describe um, as a network society and to use communication technologies to really drive your businesses forward. So let's think about some of the things that we need to be thinking about. Well, we need to frame things in a different type of way. We can't take the old cultural mindset, as my friend did, thinking that actually there was no such thing as shuffle um, on his MP3 player. And that markets are, in fact, uh, conversations. This is something that Doc Souls, who wrote the Clue Train Manifesto about 10 years ago, talking about the seismic impact of the Internet in the same way that we would have 115 festivals a year, um, a distance that a man can walk in any one day is 30 miles. So in England, um, market towns are divided by 15 miles, so I can get there and back in any one day. But the reality is, is that markets and thriving markets, based on conversations, mean we have to ask, what are we talking about? So on market day, I would in fact want to do three things. I would certainly want to trade commercially, but I also would want to share knowledge and information. And I also, because I'm a highly participatory social sort of person, would want to engage in some dancing, some joke telling, some drinking with some beer with some friends. And what I see is the network world that we are kind of moving into with great speed now is as we are going back to the way that we are uh, as people, as a species, which means that each and every one of us has a different type of role to play in a whole variety of different markets. This is a map of the online world, a part of it anyway. I don't want you to read it. What I want you to understand or see is the interconnectedness of a whole variety of different businesses. And what these businesses understand to be successful in this world is that they are sharing business models. They are sharing data. They are sharing information. It goes back to the point that you can no longer exist in a siloed, isolated way and hope that actually you will be business as usual. And the other word is ubiquity. In English, a simpler version of that is everywhere. So this idea that information, if it's locked in a silo, if it's not flowing, if it's not dynamic, means it doesn't work in the way that it needs to within the network society. And the challenge I put for, to, to, to you um, today, therefore, is, is your enterprise really built to be connected? Is it really built to be ubiquitous? Are you really taking advantage of those things or is actually the technology that you're currently using not allowing you to do something that people want you to do, which is be able to access um, information everywhere? 